Our universe is a complicated machine. What can we do to understand it? Let's jump on board a ray of light. Our guide to this world is Albert Einstein, a young patent office employee whose dreams revolutionized our understanding of the universe. He showed that Newtonian physics, which had not been challenged for over 200 years, were not completely correct. Einstein turned reality into a world of science fiction, a world with a speed limit for light. Where clocks show different times and objects change size. A reality where what is observed depends on who is observing and movement guarantees immortality. Einstein gave us the dream of time travel. He discovered that space and time exist in four dimensions and showed that the smallest mass can create devastating energy. A disturbing reality, a revolutionary theory. Prepare to decipher the code of the universe. Welcome to Relativity. A second is a second. Nothing is more basic than time. Yet time is one of our biggest mysteries. Only a genius could unlock its secrets. In 1905, at the age of 26, Albert Einstein presented his theory of special relativity to the world. A theory that confounds our idea of common sense with effects that are imperceptible in everyday life. To understand it, we have to give up seeing the world as we have until now. Einstein relied on his instincts and imagined what no one had ever imagined before. What happens when everything moves at the speed of a ray of light? Our common sense tells us what happens at low speeds, but it is completely baffled by speeds this fast. How can we see something we've never experienced? Well, don't let it worry you. Let's imagine that the universe is the size of a small city. We are in Special Relativity City. Very strange things happen here. People move like rays of light. And the distances they travel are as vast as the space between stars. It's hard to believe, but this world is real. Light travels at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second and is the fastest messenger in the universe. To give you an idea, light would travel across 300,000 football pitches in the blink of an eye. This extraordinary speed is what gives meaning to reality. The world that we see is made of light. We do not see objects, but the light reflecting off them. And light sets the speed limit. Nothing can travel faster. So even if we could ride on a light ray, we would never reach the speed of light. We can make a car go faster by stepping on the accelerator, but we cannot accelerate light. If the speed of light is finite, nothing in nature can happen instantaneously. Everything needs time to travel from one place to another. For Einstein, this property pointed to an obvious conclusion. The speed of light must be the same in all directions and for all observers. In other words, speed is determined by our own movement, even in daily life. For example, a car appears to be travelling more slowly for someone who's trying to reach it than for someone who is standing still. Yet the speed of light is the same for anyone, regardless of how fast they are moving towards it or away from it. The speed of light is absolute. This simple idea had some unexpected consequences. The inhabitants of Relative City are so far away from one another that their watches show different times. And even more surprisingly, the faster they move forward, the slower their watches become in comparison with other people's. They all think that other people are gaining time. No one realises what is actually happening. What is happening? 
Are their watches wrong? These are the consequences of special relativity. According to Einstein, any observer, regardless of where he is and the speed at which he is moving, is governed by the same universal laws. For example, speed is the distance travelled in a set amount of time. To make the speed of light constant, space and time must adapt themselves to the circumstances of the spectator, in the same way that a liquid adapts itself to the limits of a container. Space and time change shape as a result of the fixed speed of light. Let's see what this means. According to Einstein, identical watches worn by different observers cannot tell the same time. We tell the time by the light that travels to us from the watch's hands. But for someone moving away at the speed of light, the hands would stop. Put another way, if we were to travel with a ray of light at the same speed, it would look still, in the same way that a train travelling parallel to, and at the same speed as, one that we are on, seems still. In reality though, it is not light that stops, but time. At the speed of light, the passage of time stops. Light does not get old. Einstein had just demolished one of the fundamental pillars of physics, time. But what happens to space? Let's go back to Relative City. The streets have got shorter and the people seem slimmer. The faster an object moves, the smaller it becomes in the direction of movement. A moving train can fit in a tunnel smaller than itself. But these effects depend on the observer. For anyone on board the train, everything would seem normal. A person seen through a lens would change size, but this does not mean that their measurements would be any different. Speed affects not only time, but also distance. Going faster is equivalent to saying that space contracts. Although it seems ambitious, Einstein's conclusion is incredibly simple. Light has direct consequences for two concepts which, until now, have been seen as absolute space and time. And the effects of special relativity depend on the speed at which we move. In other words, the true definitions of space and time lie in motion. However, motion only has meaning in relation to other objects. Put another way, it is because we perceive different perspectives that we can see the world move. Reality, like a landscape, has an infinite number of points of view that are equally valid. Einstein understood that space and time are not absolute because there is no absolute point of view. For this reason, the effects of relativity are observed not by the person they are happening to, but by another external observer. In the same way that in a train with no windows, travelling at a constant speed, we would not know that we were moving, except if we were seen by someone not moving who was watching from the platform. In the universe, everything moves relative to everything else. For a driver, the landscape appears to move, but his travelling companion does not. Yet the car is moving relative to the road. The road is on the Earth, which rotates as it circles around the Sun, which is, in turn, rotating around the centre of the galaxy, and so on. There can be no spectator watching this drama who is not viewing it from a fixed position. Einstein went still further. In Relative City, two brothers are saying their goodbyes. One of them is going to journey to the nearest star at the speed of light, whilst the other will wait patiently for him to return. What neither of them realises is that they're about to experience a paradox. Einstein believed that time travel is possible. If time passes more slowly the faster we move, wouldn't we live longer if we travelled faster? But time travel has other effects. On his return, the brother who has travelled would get a shock. Although he had been away only a few years, to his brother he would have been away for a lifetime. This effect is known as the twin paradox. However strange the expansion of time may seem, it is a natural law. Experiments have confirmed it. Time passes more slowly in an aeroplane, or for astronauts travelling in space, than it does on Earth. 